Hi guys, it's Liam from Lanterna back with another IB Geography video, uh, but this time we're moving on from, from that Unit 1, from the Global Population section of that Paper 2, to another part of the core, uh, and this one is named Global Climate, Vulnerability and Res Resilience. In this two-part video, uh, we're firstly going to be talking about the atmospheric system, um, well, kind of generally, um, looking at the natural greenhouse effect, and then also what is the energy balance. And that's a really key idea um, that the IB highlights that we need to understand. We need to understand that because we then need to look into um, how that's changing okay? and what are the factors that are affecting um, the global energy balance and how do feedback loops, which is an idea that a lot of students struggle with, although it's, um, it's super, super simple, um, how do they kind of feed into things. Um, we're going to look at kind of solar radiation and how that's going to kind of change. But first, um, we want to talk about what is solar radiation and what is long wave um, radiation. And that is um, fundamentally what affects the atmospheric system. So the energy balance, and this is a really key term for you guys um, to try and remember, is the balance between the input energy, okay, so that's solar insulation, insulation is, um, is that shortwave radiation coming from the sun, and the output of energy. And that is energy that is re-emitted, okay, that is absorbed and then re-emitted from the, from the Earth, the terrestrial re radiation. Terrestrial meaning of Earth, uh, and that is in a long wave format. So that's crucial. Comes in a short wave, leaves the Earth as long wave radiation. And its movements and what, what kind of affects it there give rise to this, this phenomenon known as the greenhouse effect. Um, so to, in layman's term, we've got a diagram on the next um, page. You've got this incoming solar shortwave radiation. Some of that reaches the Earth's surface. Um, some of it is immediately um, um, blocked by clouds, um, depending on it, the specific uh, wavelength of the radiation um, there's a multitude of other things that can affect it but uh, about 50 percent of that will, will reach the earth's surface okay um, a large portion of that will be absorbed and then re-emitted as this long wave radiation and some of that is then trapped by gre greenhouse gases um, so can you name the greenhouse gases there's kind of three main ones that the ib wants us um, to know about the first of which is obviously um, carbon dioxide, that's the, the kind of gold sign, that's one that a lot of people um, know off by heart. Interesting, interestingly, though, uh, these other two are, are also really, really big players. Okay, so we have water vapour and then methane. And methane in particular um, is something we're going to talk about in a little bit more depth with regards to feedback loops and how this atmospheric system is changing and how one input into the system is affecting the output and thus the entire system afterwards. But this is a diagram I was, I was mentioning. We've got the incoming solar radiation. Some of that is reflected by the atmosphere, some by the clouds, some by the Earth's surface. Um, a, a lot of it is also absorbed um, as it goes in by the atmosphere and by clouds. About half of it, as I mentioned, is absorbed by the land and the oceans. And almost two thirds of that is radiated to space um, from the clouds and the atmosphere. Okay, So some of that is um, uh, directed to space from the Earth, but a lot of that is just um, radiated to space from the clouds and the atmosphere after it leaves the Earth's surface. Okay, so I move my face out of the way. You can have a little bit of look, uh, of a better look there. Okay, so the, the general gist is that shortwave radiation coming in. Some of it is reflected um, or absorbed, but a lot of it reaches the Earth. When that is then re, re um, emitted, um, in, uh, in about two thirds of it, it's in the form of long wave radiation, and some of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are able to block that. So it's that balance between that short wave radiation, that insulation, and that long wave radiation that the Earth re emits. And this balance, though, is changing. Um, so we're going to first talk about why um, the actual radiation coming into the Earth, that's reaching the Earth's surface, and that solar radiation might be changing. And the first point is global dimming. So this is where we have this, this production of, of greenhouse gases, uh, and that means that solar radiation is no longer able to um, reach, um, reach the Earth because it bounces off the atmosphere on the way in. We mentioned a second ago those greenhouse gases block it on the way out, um, but actually the more of them that are in the atmosphere um, in, in, in certain forms, that can actually cause some of that solar radiation to not even reach the Earth to be re-emitted in that long wave form. Um, volcanic eruptions are also a really, really big um, factor that affects um, that solar radiation. Okay, um, There's been a number of, of really large um, volcanic eruptions over the last decade. I don't know if you guys remember um, the Iceland case. I'm not entirely sure when that was, but that had a massive effect on the amount of solar insulation because there was a lot of particles, a lot of chemicals in the atmosphere that prevented the path of that solar insulation so from that, kind of that solar shortwave radiation um, to reach the Earth. Then, uh, kind of opposite to global dimming, we have global brightening, and this is kind of fundamentally affected by um, changes in cloud cover uh, and the destruction of the ozone layer. You guys know what the ozone layer is. 
it's trying trying to protect um, the Earth. Okay, it's it's this layer of, of particular gases in the atmosphere. As that is penetrated uh, by more pollutants, by um, an increasingly um, irresponsible um, global pattern of behaviour, um, there's more availability um, for for um, kind of solar insulation to, to get through. Okay, because it was before maybe some of it was of, was being blocked or was or was um, protected by the ozone layer. As there are more gaps kind of forming, um, more of that solar radiation will pass through. Um, just as I said, more solar radiation enters the atmosphere. Um, sunspots, okay, this is more of a phenomenon. This is to do with kind of beyond the Earth's atmosphere. There are these cyclic so solar variations, um, and solar energy can can kind of fluctuate uh, by up to 0.2%. And that's a bigger impact than I think um, a lot of scientists, or not a lot of scientists, but a lot of, uh, of people um, forget. So beyond the Earth's atmosphere, the actual solar radiation that's being emitted by the sun can vary year on year. And that's um, highly dependent on these sunspots, um, which operate in a cyclical fashion, uh, in a similar way, the Earth's orbit. Just the angle of the Earth and, and its orbit, and we know it's not exactly the same every single year, it has slight wobbles. Um, and in fact, the way that it moves is this in this optical um, way. So in, in some years, it will be closer to the, to the sun. That will have a, a small impact, but it will have an impact in the in the balance of solar radiation that is reaching the Earth's surface. Um, I'm going to leave that there for the moment and join me in the second part. And we look at some more factors that are going to affect um, the changing balance of solar radiation and that long wave radiation that is re-emitted from the Earth.